often when it comes to catching carp, one of the most difficult aspects is actually just finding the carp. If you can find the carp, then you can figure out how to catch them. Um, and when it comes to finding the carp, you have to understand where they are feeding and what areas they are likely to hold to. So we normally look for flats, um, that is parts of the dam that have a large shallow banks and that's normally where we would, we would be looking for them. I really you want a harder bottom rather than a softer bottom, though the carp often hold to the softer bottom which then makes them the more difficult for us to target but you you want a harder bottom ideally so i would sometimes take my rod and just feel the bottom and feel is the hard bottom or is it the soft bottom and that will help you know what is the chances of the carp actually seeing your bait because if the bottom is soft and there's a lot of sediment then your lead head or, or the, the small jig that you are presenting to them will drop uh, underneath the sediment and the carp won't be able to see it and if the carp can't see it you can suck it in and your chances of catching them is um, increased dr dramatically so that's not an ideal situation but on a hard bottom your lead edge will be falling on the hard bottom and the carp can easily see it and then it can take the lure okay once you've found a flat it's also important to look at what structure is available sometimes the carp would be feeding on reeds on the on the um, top on, of the reeds or tailing between the reeds uh, other times they will be feeding between water grass if you have some vegetation you see the tail sticking out between the, the grasses other times they're feeding on the surface between the grasses so it depends on the, the venue I know at Barber's Pan and Bloomhoff you have pretty bare banks with not a lot of structure necessarily in the water and there the calves will just be tailing on this, this barren banks uh, between the mud and so on but if the water lifts very very quickly in a dam and you have um, the water flooding and pushing up on the sides then often there's new vegetation in the water and this often attracts the carp to the shallows where they will be feeding uh, among the new vegetation so there's a lot of signs that you can actually be looking for when trying to locate the carp sometimes it's just the tip of a tail waving out of the water and you can see when you look down the bank uh, a lot of points sticking out of the carp tailing in the shallows other times you can see their mouths on the surface as they are feeding on the surface and you can even sometimes hear them sucking making a, a large sucking sound as they are sucking on grasses and feeding on the surface um, other, other um, situations you also find yourself in is where you find big um, mud clouds um, that gather on the surface and that's also indication of carp feeding in the area so you, when you see these, these mud clouds hanging on the surface and then you know there's a carp feeding close by and often that will be followed up by a tail uh, of a carp feeding if the water is very clear you'll physically see the carp um, tailing in the shallows or cruising down the bank uh, another thing that's extremely important to know is that you can add, only catch feeding carp on lure you cannot catch carp that's cruising so you need to find the places where the carp are actually feeding and not just swimming around Sometimes they're swimming on the surface in the deep water. Those carp normally don't take your lure, they will just ignore you. Often they're also swimming in the shallows, just cruising in the shallows. Those carp are not necessarily looking for food. But if you place your lure in front of a cruising carp, you will see quite quickly if it is interested in your lure or not. If it actually goes down and, and takes the lure or it goes for the lure, then you know, okay, these carp are actually looking for food. They are looking for, 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 um, opportunities but if they are ignoring your lure and just swimming away or keep on keep swimming in, in, in their direction then often they are not feeding um, to, to, to tell you the truth and if they're not feeding you're not going to be able to catch them you also have to realize that sometimes your presentation isn't what they want so you have to adjust your presentation and um, to imitate what they are feeding on and if you get that uh, pattern right then you'll be able to catch them Normally when you find one carp, you'll find a lot more carp in that area as they generally feed in schools. So it's a good sign if you see a feeding carp, because um, normally there will be more of them around for you to be targeting. Um, another thing that's important to realize with carp is just as many other species they hold to certain areas. So when you figure out the areas that hold carp, normally season by season you'll find them at the same places and we'll be able to target them there at the same places year after year 
but it, de it depends on the circumstances of the dam. Sometimes the dam will be lower, sometimes it will be fuller, and they will be changing their feeding areas according to the water level and the food available. So that also plays a major role. Normally when targeting carp, I would be looking for uh, shallower waters rather than deeper waters. Um, I generally wouldn't easily target carp deeper than 3 meters, um, but it depends on how experienced you are and so on. The more experience you get with this game, the easier it is for you to target them um, in deeper water, but I wouldn't advise it when you start with this game. Um, I would say less than 3 meters is the ideal. Actually, I would say, uh, let's say half a meter up to 2.5 meters, that's, that's good water to be targeting them in. And then you also have to look at the clarity of the water. If the water is extremely dirty, let's say a stained brown color, it's going to be more difficult for a carp to see your lure. So the browner the water is, the more difficult it is to catch them in deeper water. That's where you, where you normally want to target them in shallower water. Um, but the leads we use also give off a little vibration and that vibration can help the carp to detect it if it's close enough to its mouth. But generally, if the water's too dirty, it's difficult to catch them in deeper water and there you will only be successful targeting, targeting them in shallower waters. Generally, carp are very shy fish, so they would normally stay away from areas that have a lot of people around. That's why you don't see a lot of carp feeding uh, between the, the bank anglers and so on. They will normally hold to areas where there's almost no fishermen around and that's where they will be feeding. So that's also important to realize is if you're going to be looking for them, look for the areas that don't have a lot of commotion and people around. Okay, we finished now discussing carp as an introduction and just giving you an idea of how they think and how they feed and where they stay. And now we're going to move over to the tackle we use to target them. Basically, you have two setups that you will be using to target them most of the time when doing lure fishing. And that would be your dipping rod and also a casting setup. So when it comes to the dipping setup, here is an example of what you might be looking for. It is a challenge to find these telescopic rods. So um, I'll see if I can assist you to actually uh, find some of these rods if you are looking for them. I can uh, point you in the right direction or try to. But yeah, this is a dipping rod or telescopic rod. As you can see, it um, can expand actually. Um, you can set it up all the way to fit in foot and that's actually it's got a lot of length so that allows you to actually target the carp from quite a distance so you can get close to the carp but you can also have enough distance between you and the fish so that you can target it um, from quite a distance when it comes to these telescopic rods it's important that you have one that's not too short, I would say 12 to 13 foot, and it must have enough backbone. This one's casting weight is 120 to 180 grams. I would look for anything similar to this, a similar class, because um, there's a lot of rods out there that have, doesn't have enough backbone, and the point's very flimsy, and that makes it difficult for you to dip your lead it um, accurately, because it's shaking around so much with the soft tip. Also, if the tip's too soft, then the carp will just snap it when it pulls away um, so, and it doesn't have enough backbone for a big fish. So be careful of that. Um, the reason we fish with a telescopic rod is because it's easy to stow away these um, long rods um, when it can collapse and become small like this. As you can see, this is a very uh, nice size, very short rod setup to actually um, put away in the boat. So you can actually just put in one of your rod hatches and it's stowed away. And when you need it again, you just take it out and extend it, and then you can use it for its full length. And the reason you would use a dipping rod is when you are targeting carp that are feeding in structure, um, and that doesn't allow you to cast for them, you will also be using the telescopic dipping rods when the carp are feeding on the surface, on hyacinth or on the reeds, and you need to hold the lure in front of the carp, and also when you're working or wading down a bank and you want to dip at a lot of tailing carp, then you can also use the dipping rod. Regarding the reels we use on these rods, normally a bait caster is the ideal, 
as light as possible because you want your telescopic rod to be very light so you can move it very quickly to dip several carp if you have to without any um, struggle and then on this, the bait cards that we will normally be using uh, braid, I prefer using braid I would say something like a 20 pound braided line is the ideal and you can decide if you want to use a leader or not most of the time when I'm dipping I'm not using a leader um, the nice thing about the braid is it's very thin diameter allows the lure to sink very quickly through the water and it, the braid line also allows you to cut through vegetation when you're fighting the fish and you're catching it inside a lot of structure our second setup that we will be using is a ca the casting setup um, I've been using the Sama Hornet Pro Lite rods for the past few months and I've been enjoying using it for carp as my casting setup a lot it's got a little bit more length being 7.8 foot which allows you to cast a little further accurately and also get your lure further past the feeding carp so this is a very nice rod for me to use for carp um, and then on it I have a 2500 size reel so this is a spinning reel that I would be using uh, I, I prefer this size as if you go any bigger then it gets a little bit too heavy for your setup and if you go any smaller then you're gonna have a a hell of a fight if you hook a big fish and it can also run all the line off your spool as the big carp tend to run you far out so you want enough line on your spool um, also important with the rod is it mustn't be too light so this one has a, a medium action and that is enough backbone to help you fight the fish um, if it has if it's a little bit bigger fish you can actually control it a bit but if your rod is too light action like an ultra light or so then the fish are just going to stuff you up easily so on the, on the reel that we're using we have a 15 pound braided line that we are using and that that's the ideal i would say between 15 and 20 pound braid and you want to get as thin as possible diameter braid um, when you're targeting carp because you're casting very small lures and need to cast it with with great ease so if the the diameter of the line is very thin you'll be able to to cast your leadhead or flick your jigget with a lot more ease so that's important I would say your diameter has to be between 0 0.12 and 0 0.2 that's the, that's the diameter I would be looking for also regarding the diameter of the braided line you want it to be as thin as possible to allow it to sink faster so that your leadhead sinks faster and gets to the carp before it moves from one spot to another so yeah, fin diameter is also important, especially when you're targeting carp in a little deeper water. That uh, makes a big difference. On the braided line, I would use a fluorocarbon leader. Normally between 10 and 12 pound, uh, depending on the size fish I would be targeting. For bigger carp, I would be using the 12 and then smaller ones, obviously the 10, 10 pound. If you go too thick on your fluorocarbon, then it's also going to affect the sinking rate of your lure. And that's just, at the end of the day it's going to cause you to catch a lot less fish so the reason you have the fluorocarbon leader is to protect your line um, when you have the fish and fighting it against structure so that it doesn't cut off your, your braid on structure but also to protect your line against the dorsal fin of the carp where they tend to try and cut you off on that fin so if you have the leader you have a little bit more protection and it, it's a lot more abrasive resistant and that um, helps you at the end of the day to catch the carp the length, the length of this leader I would say it will be from your front eye um, the, it mustn't come past your front eye so that's the idea because if you get it onto your spool and you have to flick and cast then sometimes your, your, um, the knot gets um, stuck on your spool and that can cause you to miss a fish so the idea is that you don't want to be past your front eye and the knot that we use for um, connecting your braided line and your fluorocarbon is the FG knot because it's the smallest possible knot for the, and it's also extremely strong so I must say using the FG knot it does move through the eyelet of the eyes of the rod a lot easier and then it allows you to flick with a lot of ease and convenience but if you use a lot of the other knots like the double uni and so on it tends to get stuck um, which is very frustrating part of your setup and the very last part is the lure you will, you will be using and that would be a carp leadhead and the carp leadhead is a variation 
of the ones here in my hand as you can see there's different let is available to the market and the important thing is that it is a black lead it and that it has black feathers on it and this variation works for us all over South Africa it will work at most venues where carp take lures um, what is quite important when using these lead heads is that the gap between your lead and between your hook must be wide enough so that's one factor I always look at is that it must have quite a wide gap there to ensure that you get a good hook up what's also important for me is that how the lure stands on your hand let's see so you can see you, the idea is that it stands with the hook facing upwards see that's how you want your lure to be fall when it falls on the ground you must stand with the hook proud so that's extremely important because when the carp sucks it up then you will get the best hook set on the top of its mouth and then also the feathers that you look at the, the feathers must stand also quite proud it must have enough feathers on and as you can see here the hackle will move quite a lot of water when it moves through the water so it gives off enough vibration so if the carp can see the lure it will feel that vibration and that will also assist you to find the lure and suck it in um, and you, you you will use different sizes of these ladies you get the small medium large the small ones i don't use too often but medium is what i would be using most of the time sometimes the carp want the lure to sink slower and then I'll be using a medium other times the carp are feeding very quickly from spot to spot and that's when I will be using a heavier or, or the large lead head so that it gets down quickly and the carp can just see it and take it but um, it depends on the circumstances you will also see that on these lead heads we use a small curry tail grub trailer the trailer is most of the time it's crucial and that can be either a large or extra large in most cases and we use yellow and red and uh, even black as color sometimes the carps prefer prefer the lead head without a trailer so that's also something you will need to find out on the day as you experiment but here you can see this example of a curly tail grub as a trailer um, there's just on the lead head and that's how we would rig it and this would just create a little bit vibration to assist the carp in finding the lure and it also catches their eye a little bit of yellow to, to, to um, find the lure basically to end off regarding the lead head this lead head is an imitation of the small underwater insects that the carp are looking for in the marrow dirt so that's what you're trying to imitate and it's also not a bad imitation of the snails that they also sometimes feed on so that's why we use it and as I mentioned before it works for us, for us all over South Africa this is the only lure we use and we use it all over South Africa so if the carp are taking lures they will be taking on this